So I got some time on my hands today. Kind of tight confines back here, but you can kind of see what I've done with the speakers in the very rear. You know these trucks, they have a from the factory, a very oddball 4x10 speaker, a big old long oval thing that goes back here. In my 93 I just put two 4 inch speakers back here under the factory grills and that worked pretty well. When I was looking at all of this and even then in the 93 one when I realized what kind of space is back there, I definitely got room for these 6's. So I've got four sixes back here. But something's going on where the back channel of my stuff isn't working, which you also see with this. It's not staying the way I want or thought or designed it to do. Uh, when it's warmer and I feel like I can paint safely. It's pretty warm day today, but not quite up there into the 50s and 60s that I want it to be. I'll probably rebuild a new plate where it has a plate behind here and one up front that sandwiches it. And probably take the front one and either make it a thinner, this is about half inch ply that or recess them inside so the actual speaker rings themselves will sit recessed inside the outside plate there will be enough room to do that for sure you can tell with the foam I definitely use the foam buckets again I think I'm gonna change that much like I did the, uh, the two two doors up front where I staple those inside the ring instead of on the face of it and get the speakers to sit more flush look a little cleaner I think the only reason this one is actually holding some of the Gorilla Glue got right here and actually glued it to the headliner. Um, I see my speaker wires in there. I just I need to double check in here. One, I want to see what I can do to fix this thing, stop it from flapping around so much. At the bottom, it's bolted inside there to the factory location. I'm gonna see if I can what I can do to glue or secure that a little better. And maybe I will put a, a little bit of Gorilla Glue right there. I don't know. I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna keep tearing these apart. Um, you see, as is me, I use a deck screw again. Nice thing to go into plywood with. But I would caution, if you do that, be careful because these, these attachment rings for the speakers are actually plastic. And so you don't want to drive too hard and crack them or anything. And obviously driving that close to the speaker surround. If you rip that foam, you might as well toss the speaker. Well, you can repair it, but I don't know. Yeah, so I'm going to get back to work. This is my little Saturday morning fun. Don't know how well you can see that. Stupid focus, come on. But if you can tell, yeah, I've got negative as a striped wire. So I seem to have wired these correctly the way they would conventionally, and these are tapped into the factory system, so it should go to the factory wiring. <sighs> so I don't know. I don't know. I think this leads me more and more to believe it is actually my head unit sucks and it's not pumping any sound to the back to the back channels. So more and more it looks like I gotta replace that head unit. It sucks because not a bad head unit if it would work correctly. So you can see a little better. It's just these DAI boom mat speaker baffles, speaker hats, whatever you want to call them. That's what I've used there. And then a couple of come on focus. A couple of screws going in there into the factory metal bracket that I cut down that would have held that four by ten weirdo thing. You know, just two wood screws holding that. And I got some plywood that I cut that should glue up there, but I did it with hot glue and that's not really holding. I had to find something a little better to hold it with. I suppose I could try more hot glue, but I can't really screw anything up to the front here because that's the exterior sheet metal of the truck. Unlike back here, you have some interior metal structure. I wish I could hold that up. Am I doing a piece of strap up here to the front and going back to that structure? Maybe, but I'm not sure what I want to do. The wind's kicking up and it's flapping my manual around. I wanted to double check the polarity again because remember on these it was counterintuitive. You would think the dark one would be the ground. No, the light one's the ground. And yeah, it's I wired them up correctly. So that's not the issue. So once again, I, I do believe my deck is at fault. You can see in there, I also behind there put a strip of GT mat. I had leftover ones. Nice to see that it's actually holding up. Everything due to, you know, not like these little sixers are the most powerful thing ever, but everything I can do to help them, I did. So, yeah. 
I'm gonna put it all back together now. Try to glue that up there with something. Gorilla glue, maybe? I don't know. I'll reach into the toolbox and see what I got that might hold better than just the hot glue did. Alright, let's see what I can do. Car audio professionals everywhere are about to cringe with what I'm about to try. <laughs> I'm about to go carpenter on this thing. Some kitchen and bath, 100% silicone. That's some of the stickiest stuff ever known. So if I can get it to set up and hold, it should do the trick. Let's see if I can squirt it on in there and hold it up till it sets. You may want to get a knife and peel off that old hot glue stuff that's sticking out. I might do that. But yeah, that's what I've got. That's what I'm going to use. Hopefully, as sticky it is and everything you use in construction, it should help for here too. Maybe not the first option, maybe not the best option, but it is what I'm going to do. So yeah, let's have fun with this. So yeah, pull it apart, pull it down anyway. Just undo those two screws there. You can see what kind of bracket I made here. The hot glue here, and here its only purpose was to hold until the Gorilla Glue took over. I just stuck all the wood parts together with Gorilla Glue. So that stuff is fantastic at holding stuff down. So I put the Gorilla Glue in, hot glued it in place, which is basically held it in place so the Gorilla stuck. But up here all I did was hot glue, and that just... I, know, I probably should have showed you before I ripped it off, but... It didn't do a thing. It didn't sit with the metal. It cools off too soon or something. But you look up here, you barely got any hot glue that actually stuck. There's a piece up there, a little booger of it. But it barely even stuck. Barely left any trace of actually having stuck. So, let's see if the silicone does the trick better. question is, how long do I got to sit here to hold it up there to get it to set till it sticks? Find something else. Duct tape? I don't know. Something. It's curious to me when you look at this how much there is of insulation in this headliner. And it's a, a foam. So it's fiberboard foam and then uh, the cloth itself. There we go. Get you a better shot. I was looking at this headliner and thinking about stripping it down. Because there's blemishes in it. Nothing that makes me really want to do it. Especially since I replaced the front windshield and the guys at Safe Light actually glued the, the falling pieces right back up. Now I'm thinking, do I really care? Do I need to? I'm also looking in here, from in here, can I actually get access to... And now there's a bunch of factory glue foam in there. Up to the top side to be able to put in some clearance lights on the rear. You know, basically drill in there. Center one there, but I'm looking and... And I can't even see where yeah you can't even see the center mount high the high center mount light br brake light up there you don't have as much access in there even with the whole wiring looms right here not as much access as I'd want yeah that's me rambling um, anytime I pull apart I'm always thinking two or three projects ahead what else would I do next what would I like on this truck more I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that let me get back to the job at hand I saw how those hats were in there before. Now they have a lip that comes over. Now I'm going to cut them flush and staple them to the face since that is a good half inch plywood. And that way the speaker should sit more flush with this adapter board I've done. But yeah, I got that cock in there. Threw another bead on the outside, see if we can't get some good holding power that way. That one's nice and tight. Oh, you can see on that one I've got a fair amount of caulking there because it's not tight it see that flex I'm just kind of hoping once it dries it'll hold and I'm not going anywhere for a couple hours so it should have some time to cure up and maybe that'll give me some sticking power I'm wanting and this thing will stop flapping in my <laughs> rear view mirror but yeah I'll get her I'll get these hats stapled in speaker set and just let her let the truck sit for a couple hours and let all that set up if it's stupid but works it ain't all that stupid is it well, here's another little thing. Yeah, I got little kids, but you when you don't have little kids, Costco baby wipes. They're so freaking cheap and they're useful for everything. Wiping up the excess caulking. I just got something about to spill there. But these things are perfect for, they clean your hands off on anything. I always keep a couple packs in the truck, not just for the kids. A lot of times more for me. Oh, that's where that went. It's my Torx key set. 
Maybe back here, but yeah. Baby wipes. Mechanic's best friend. It does occur to me I probably should have waited to install the speakers until the silicone had actually cured and dried and had some sort of sticking power, but yeah, got a pickaxe handle. Brace it up there nice and tight and let it sit for a few hours. The hindsight also occurs to me that you could fit a 6x9 in there. There is enough space, but I bought these worried about back basket depth, and I'm not sure what the depth is. I know I've looked it up before, and you can find it on Rockford's product details. Um, but these things, these sixes are fairly shallow, and so that's why I chose them and two sets of those in there. Should give plenty of sound, and it used to when the system was working correctly. Give plenty of sound. But yeah, we'll, we'll figure this out. So here I am in my Haynes manual, and this is where I get everything about electrical. And you can see typical four speaker system, what the colors are. Um, obviously this truck being a Suburban, two in the rear, two in the mid doors, two in the front doors, it's a six speaker, but all they did was basically add another set of speakers in parallel to the rear speakers. So those colors, focus, 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 won't focus. Someday I gotta get a real camera. Maybe you can see that, but those colors actually do go back to here. Can you see that? Yeah, yellow and brown is what that says there, yellow and brown. So you might be tempted to think that yellow is your positive. No, 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 no. GM doesn't want to do it that way. Yellow is your negative. And brown is your positive, which is just bass backwards to me. Yellow should be a power wire. And brown and green and black, those are colors for, for grounds. But no, not here. So, yeah, look at that. And yeah, I've done it correctly. So it's wired up good here, too. So we know the fault's not back here. More confirmation. And, you know, I knew that before, too, because it did work before. <clears throat> I'm looking at this, trying to see up in there. Yeah, that hot glue didn't hold there either, so maybe the silicone will hold better. But yeah, chassis electrical. This book is so old, I bought this thing back when I bought my original 93 Suburban. It has all the data for both trucks, so maybe I have to replace this when it's starting to fall apart. I always love these. These are, these are indispensable to have. Good repair manual so you can actually check your chassis electrical, all kinds of electrical stuff back here that I, I refer to all the time. Yeah, let me get to doing the same thing to this side, speakers that I did that side. So yeah, I just cut off the, the rims of the hat and you can staple them on the inside. I don't have three hands. Um, I don't have a head mount either. But yeah, that's, that's all I'm doing with these. So yeah, there you can see what that Gorilla Groove is doing. It all seeped out past the hot glue. And it started sticking into this foam up here. And that was holding it in place, but you know, this is not the most structurally sound piece of things to actually mount a speaker to. You can get a good idea here. See this metal bracket here? That's all that's left. It has a pair of bolts there and there that bolt it. There used to be a whole big old metal deal, a lot smaller hole. And that metal deal would hold the 4x10 that was in there. Again, leftover pieces of GT mat stuck up there. There, that holds it nice and neat. Wow, that's... The roof is actually getting warm today. But yeah. Again, more of that foam stuff, and I don't... That's their foam adhesive banding or bonding all the pieces together, keeping down rattles, and that's all good and fine, but... I don't know how you get to that center mount light up there. I'm guessing you have to pull the headliner and the plastic trim down to get to that. I was thinking about messing around with more clearance lights in the back, and maybe I won't. I don't know. Someday when i got more time on my hands, when I actually feel like pulling this whole headliner down and changing it from gray to black. Maybe. Maybe that's when I'll do it. Yeah, for the speakers, that Gorilla Glue seeps out. It's just like um, spray foam insulation. Same kind of, same kind of chemistry. And you look, you can see exactly my bracket and get the screwdriver out of the way. I'm grunt when I lift with my injured arm, sorry. Um, but you can see that barely even barely even held anything. There's only a couple of spots of any sort of contact whatsoever and that just it's kind of a pisser. So it didn't do its job at all. Here it's nice and flat. It actually held. Well I mean it made contact anyway but it didn't hold. Both were flapping in the wind. Well 
Let's see if this, let me get all this crap taken off and I'll put it back up there, see if the silicone does better. Silicone ten, tends to stick to everything. Tends to be much better, but yeah, let me get back to it. Well, that concludes this one. Yeah, axe handle, pick axe handle, hold those up in there while the silicone dries. I got about 45 minutes before I got to go anywhere, so hopefully it dries in that time. If not, well, I got a plan B and I rebuild these things all together like I was talking sandwich them into the headliner well that's not my preferred I'd rather have them secured to structure but I don't have too many options back here to do so but yeah axe and pickaxe handle hold those up nice and tight give them 45 minutes to dry hopefully that's enough um, interesting law that most people don't know about if you're on national forest lands you are supposed to have a shovel and an axe in your vehicle most people don't know that even some of my soldiers didn't know that one in college, I volunteered for the Forest Service and learned all kinds of interesting ones like that that just people don't know, don't pay attention to. But yeah, we'll see if that keeps these things secure so I don't have them flapping in my rear view mirror every time I look back. And that's, that's kind of a minor thing compared to that stupid deck up there. If we can get that to work, it'd be nice. I tend to think the, the real truth is I'm going to be replacing that deck this summer with something that actually works. Well, yeah, thanks for following along. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.